Hi, my name is Amy Heisey, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to draw St. Charles Luanga step by step using simple lines and simple shapes. We celebrate the feast day of St. Charles Luanga and Companions on June 3rd. For this project, you need a piece of paper, a pencil, and something to color with. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to draw an oval for his head. So close to the top of my paper, I'm going to draw out an oval shape to create the size of his head. Next, underneath his chin, I'm going to put two downwards lines, one here and one here on the right side, and that is creating the neck and I'm going to draw out his shoulders by drawing a line that comes out towards the left and one that comes out towards the right. I'm going to draw some downwards lines starting at the shoulders, one on the left side and one on the right side, and that is creating his arms and shoulders. We're going to be putting in this stack of wood that he's holding. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw a line that goes across his chest. It sticks out a little bit on the left side and it comes over towards the right side past his arm like this. That creates the top. And we are going to leave a space in the middle and draw this line down here at the bottom. So I'm going to do a similar kind of line going across the body like this and finding a place to stop. To create the edges of this wood pile, I'm going to be doing a bumpy wavy line. So I'm starting at the top of this wood pile and I'm moving my pencil in and out, in and out, creating kind of like a bumpy wavy line. You can have as many bumps as you wish. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm just gonna move my pencil in and out creating um, these bumpy kind of jagged edges like that. To finish off this pile of wood, I'm going to pick a spot over here on the left side and I'm just going to draw a bunch of lines that come across and you're just starting on one side and drawing lines over and over until you have a pile of wood that St. Charles Luanga is holding. So I'm just gonna keep going all the way down until I run out of space. And it's okay if you have not as many as me or if you have more than me, it all works out. He's holding on um, this pile of wood and we can see the circles of his fingertips. So we have five little circles underneath. So at the bottom of your wood pile over here on the left side, kind of in line with the arm and shoulder, you're going to draw one, two, three, four, five little circles or ovals on this side. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this right side, kind of lining it up with his arm and shoulder. I'm going to draw one, two, three, four, five little fingers over on this right side. We're gonna be drawing in his robe. So we're gonna start at the top. So by the, um, this left side where his neck is, I'm going to draw a diagonal line that comes down and stops at the wood pile. And I'm going to um, do a curved line that comes slightly higher than his shoulder and connects to the wood pile. So over here on this left side by his neck, where I started my diagonal line, I'm going to do a curve that comes up and then over but towards um, this arm. And that is going to create this part of his robe that's wrapped around the shoulder. So I no longer need this line. So I'm going to erase it like that. And I can see a little bit of his arm right here. So I'm gonna do a straight up and down line on this right side. I'm gonna stop at the pile, but I wanna make sure that I'm leaving a space here for his shoulder. 
We're going to draw two downwards lines for the bottom part of his robe. So um, kind of where this line for the top part ended, I'm going to draw a line that comes straight down the page for however tall or short you want him to be. I'm going to stop and I'm going to do the same thing on this opposite side. So kind of where this arm is, that's where I want to line up my next line. So I'm going to do a straight line coming down and I want it to be about the same length as my other line so that they're parallel and match. I'm going to connect the robe down at the bottom with a slightly curved line. Think kind of like a smile. And that finishes off the main part of his robe. But we still need to add in these lines that represent folds of fabric. So I have three lines. There's one here one in the middle and one on the right side. So starting um, at the top of his shoulder, I'm going to do a line that comes down. I'm gonna stop at the wood. I'm going to continue that line on the opposite side just a little bit. And then in the same place that I started the first line, I'm going to do a line that comes down, stops at the wood, continues on the opposite side and I'm going to do one more. I'm starting in the exact same spot doing a diagonal line that stops at the wood and continues down on the other side. We're going to be doing his feet next. So the shape of his feet kind of reminds me of a triangle. So I'm going to start with this inside line um, for these heels first. So down at the bottom of his robe, I want you to put two straight lines like this that are parallel to each other. Right now it kind of looks like the number 11, the way that they're right next to each other. And I'm going to do a longer line for the underside of his foot. And this is creating the length. So you can make that long or short, depending on how big you want his feet to be. And then we are going to do a line that comes up and stops at his robe. So there's a little bit of a space here. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this longer side, that's gonna end up being his toe and it's gonna come up and stop at the robe and that creates his heel and ankle area. In my example, I can see a little bit of his big toe. So I'm gonna put a little line there. So right here, I'm just gonna draw one line on each foot to represent the big toe. You don't have to do any more lines for the toes because the rest are kind of hidden behind. And if you want to, you can draw some ground underneath his feet where he's standing. We're gonna finish off his head. So over um, at the top of his head, in the middle, you're going to put a curve on the left for one ear and a curve on the right for the other ear. We're gonna finish off um, his hair. So what you're gonna do is at the top of his head, just a little bit down, you're gonna start with a line that comes almost straight across, but instead of connecting, you're gonna do a line that comes down on both the left side and the right side. And then you're going to connect that to the side of his head and that finishes off his hair. Sometimes you see him wearing a hat in pictures. So if you prefer to do a hat instead of hair, that is okay. And I just did a simple face for my Charles Luanga. He has two circle eyes, a simple nose and a simple mouth. Feel free to change it up however you wish. But if you're following along with me right about where his ears are in the middle of his face, you're going to do two simple circles for the eyes, in between his eyes and the bottom of his chin, you're going to put a curve like a smile for a simple nose. And for his mouth, um, I have his mouth just kind of straight. So in between where his nose and his chin is, you're going to put a line for where his mouth is and I added an extra 
line underneath but a little bit shorter to kind of hint at his bottom lip. I have two little curves above his eyes for his eyebrows. And last but not least, if you would like, um, you can add flames like I did to my example. So we're gonna start with these outside curved edges of the flame. So they're kind of curved, um, like nice and shallow, think kind of like a parenthesis. So I'm going to do one curve on the left side. I'm going to do one curve on the right side and that is creating the width of my flames. Then what I'm going to do is over here on this left side I'm going to do a line that comes down. Now I have kind of like a triangle point for this flame. I'm going to do another curve up kind of like another parenthesis shape come down and then for this last curve, I'm gonna have it swoop up towards the left. So I'm going to add a swoop here and then connect it to his robe. I'm gonna do something similar on this right side. Um, starting with this big curve, I'm going to do a triangle point coming down. I'm going to do a line that curves up down and then I can have it come off and connect to his body. And mine looks a little bit different than this one, but that is okay. After you finish drawing your St. Charles Luanga, you can color him. And I'm gonna be using markers because that's what shows up well on camera. And when I use markers, I like to outline my artwork with pens kind of like these, but you can use your favorite art supplies. For the flames, I did three different colors. I did red, orange, and yellow, kind of creating these different stripes along the inside. So if you want to match my flames, you can grab some similar colors, kind of like this. And what I did was I started with the darkest colors on the edges. So I did red first, kind of just tracing along the inside of my flame lines, kind of like this. Adding a stripe of orange. And then finishing off with yellow. Thank you so much for following along. I would love to see how your drawings turned out. Feel free to tag me on social media. And if you enjoyed following along with today's tutorial, know that I post new Catholic inspired art tutorials here on my channel every week. Another way that you can help support the channel is through my Buy Me A Coffee page and art supply wish list. I want to remind you that you are loved. God loves you very much and he loves your artwork very much. Thank you so much for following along and I'll see you in the next video.